the sky. His eyes are always on the sky because out of the vast blue dome comes that for which he searches. In a world where the quarry pursues the hunter, this man is the hunter. It's a world of technical jargon where he receives instructions in his own special dialect. Brown right, double wing, half back swing down the sideline, X hook, 55 lead pass. Lightning veer and peel L30 fly pass. Zig in, zig out, flash to the extruder. Brown left wide nasty, 16 lead pass, post flag with a, to Gloucester. 55 lead pass with a smush. Okay, red 47 banana flare pass with a chestnut nine power G stroke and a swing to the deep corner on three. Brown right double wing, 55 lead pass, half back swing, X hook. See if he can hit a home run. Come on. And when the earth booming, monster groaning struggle of the line is about to begin, when the havoc wreakers settle with a thud, this man scampers to an isolated position on the fringe of violence. For his job is not to collide and bruise and howl and punish, but rather his job is to streak beneath the diamond sky with one hand waving free, silhouetted by the stand to make the circus catch. It's his job and his glory to rise on the voice of the cheering throng. For this man is the receiver. A man whose labor it is to try and catch the wind. A receiver's world is glamour and glory, and every boy must give it some thought in his hidden daydream world. Thoughts of a ball spiraling, bulleting into outstretched hands. Thoughts of defenders beaten and touchdowns scored. So dream on, and if you grow with rifle crack speed like Bob Hayes of Dallas, then you can make it. For no one catches Bob Hayes. His speed is so feared that the opposition will give him the short ground. But danger lurks there. And many defenders have found themselves fading in the smoking footsteps of Bob Hayes from Dallas. Even if you lack speed, dream on. And if you grow with hands deft and spider web sticky like Fred Belitnikoff of Oakland, then you can make it. Great hands are his primary asset, but his deceptively fluid moves after the catch are also largely responsible for the fact that every fourth time Fred Belitnikoff catches the football, he scores a touchdown. Even if you lack his kind of talent, dream on. And if you grow with computer precision moves like Gary Garrison of San Diego, then you can make it. 
a quarterback's dream. He arrives when the ball does, not an inch to spare. Patterned precision. Even his fakes are from a geometry textbook. If you don't have this talent, don't despair, for it's but one of many talents that can make a receiver great. So young man, dream on. Develop your own style like Ben Hawkins of Philadelphia, and you can make it. He plays without a chin strap, sometimes without a helmet. He's a one-man neon flashing midway whose style is carnival. He makes the easy ones look tough, the tough ones impossible. He's the lone flying Wallenda, and his best catches bear his distinctive signature, the Hawkins flip. For Ben Hawkins, catching a football is exaltation, revelry, a celebration of the game. If you lack this talent, still dream on, for your style may be different, and like Washington's Charlie Taylor, you can make it. Charlie Taylor, always smiling because he knows that somehow he's going to beat his man. Moves uncanny and created to frustrate his opponent. The only way to beat him is to cheat him. But if you cheat the second leading receiver in the national conference, then you'll pay the fiddler while you watch him dance around you, a cross between pinwheel and unleashed whirlwind. As you live in your dreams of promised future, Charlie Taylor's frenetic style deserves some thought. So dream on, and if you can put it all together like Paul Warfield, then you have made it. For he is one in a million, a blend of many talents. Flowing like molten honey. Speeding to the ever widening distance. Catching with dexterity and suppleness of hand. His style is that of the receiver. For Paul Warfield is the classic definition of those who try and catch the wind. If you find that the elements of Warfield's style elude you, dream on. For perhaps you'll become a raw-boned, heavy muscle bull of a man designed to play tight end where a man must be a punishing blocker.
It's a position where a man must go after the ball with reckless abandon. But above all, tight end is a position where a man must batter his way goalward like a Packard eight in a demolition derby. Although most of today's tight ends are block solid, there is a new type in evidence. Taller, thinner, and faster, they are men like Cincinnati's six feet, six inch Bob Trumpy, whose height is an obvious advantage. And once he gets the ball in the open, his long strides and effortless speed are his passport to the end zone. If you don't have any outstanding physical characteristics like Bob Trumpy, Still dream on, and maybe like Dan Abramowitz, number 46 of New Orleans, you can make it on sheer persistence. I can get this guy on turnouts now. Turn out on the short side. I can kill him on turnouts now. I can get, turn out on the short side. Let's do it in the short side. Turnouts in the short side, Bill. Short side turnout, Bill. 74 to the post. No one picked me up on that 74. Okay, Danny, run a 74 turnout on the short side. Get him, Danny, get him, Danny. Beat that rookie. Let's go, Stace. We need to score. Beat that rookie. <laughs> You're full of, what do you mean I tripped? 15 on number 46. What do you mean I'm going to get 15? Can you believe that? He tripped me. Hey, that's got to be the worst call I've ever seen. Mean, is that the worst you've seen ever? I've never seen anything like that in my life. Can you believe this down here? He's going out. If I release out, he's going to come up. You talking about a trip job? Is that the worst you've seen? That's got to be. I don't know. I'll tell you that. Because you tripped yourself on the corner. Door. How could I fall that uh, like I shot out of a can and I went down? He tripped me. He tripped me. On this Sunday, things did not go well for Abramowitz, but in 1969, he led the league in receptions. He led because he has guts and enthusiasm in place of speed and size. He has no fear of going across the middle into the defender's lair. because Dan Abramowitz knows that it will pay off, and when it does, he will live in that one glorious, soaring moment that is the lifeblood of the receiver. Dream on, young man, and if your dreams come true, then you will join the battle. Face to face with the sharks of the gridiron the cornerbacks and safety men whose success depends on the receiver's failure. We two are enemies. There is no love lost here. We two are seekers. There is but one grail and we'll not share.
In the battle, there are many events that turn on freakish fate. In the battle, there are many events that turn on freakish weather. In the battle, the receiver must survive. He must outmaneuver and outrace the defenders and leave these shocks threshing helplessly in his wake. Then the sharks will pursue in packs of two and three, nipping and slashing. The great receivers will respond to the challenge and defeat even these are. But the defenders have one weapon that no receiver can counter. It's called paying the dues and it hurts. You might as well catch the ball because you're going to get hit whether you do or not. When you're in the air, you're helpless. An eagle soaring, but for a moment in the shotgun sights. Small wonder that sometimes the receiver hears footsteps where there are none. Small wonder he sometimes cannot hold on. Small wonder that with those footsteps echoing in his mind, the receiver is sometimes battling only himself. Time is another element in the receiver's battle, because when time is short and the distance to victory is long, it's the receiver who's called upon to deliver the one big play. He's the last bastion of hope, the last gossamer thread that binds a team to victory. Sometimes he wins his battle with the clock. But time is a relentless enemy. As one receiver has said, to know that you're the last man on your team with a chance to win it, to give it your all and then to look up from the one or two yard line and see those double zeros staring back at you, it's a terrible feeling. As time ticks away, the receiver must dig deep inside himself to the well of super efforts. Efforts that are part adrenaline, part desire, 
and part a whisper of man's need to come up a winner. As the battle rages, the defender for his part must exercise an acrobat's agility, an intuitive feel for where the play will go. He must have speed and reflex. He must have hands and poise. He must sever the scoring arc and splinter the receiver's hopes. Sever the scoring arc and turn it into his own mad dash to glory. And if he does all this, he may still come up lacking. For inside every receiver, there lives a man with miracle hands waiting to retaliate, to be released into the sun and smell and swelling scream of 50,000 throats, cheering him in his moment of victory. So dream on, young America. Dream of the battle. Dream of these miracle men with miracle hands. Dream of these men, some with speed, some with grace, and some with moves that dazzle. And dream of someday joining them in their singular quest. For these men are the receivers. They are the men who try and catch the wind. <laughs>